I'm going to introduce the concept of arc length and talk a little about it, about its calculation, and then the rest of the videos are going to go into other considerations of arc length, speed, distance, and curvature, which is the other big geometric concept in this section. So suppose we have, uh, to start with a very concrete and nice example, let's look at a curve that traces out the circle of radius r centered at the origin, and going around, let's say, in the standard way, counterclockwise. Well, we know a way to do that, and that is having the position be described by r of t is r cosine t comma r sine t. Taking our favorite example of the unit circle and just scaling everything up by r to make it the circle of radius r. So, for example, for a certain value of t, somewhere about pi over 4 maybe, here's the location of the particle. Now, what about its velocity vector? That's going to be going in this direction, tangent to the circle. And let's go ahead and calculate that. B of t is going to be, just take the derivatives, minus r sine t comma r cosine t. And I put it in angle brackets because it really is a vector. This, this guy deserves to be a vector too, but you can also think of it as a, a variable point. But this guy really is a vector that's an arrow. So I want to talk about the speed of that particle. The speed is just the magnitude of the velocity. So that's pretty easy. There's not really a, a separate notation people usually use for speed. So sometimes I just write it out as the word, and sometimes I just give it as the magnitude of velocity. OK, so what's the calculation there? It's the square root of the square of this guy. Remember, the minus sign always squares away, so don't even write it. r squared sine squared plus r squared cosine squared t. And of course, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So you get the square root of r squared. r is a positive number, so that's just r. OK, so this is very nice. Uh, in particular, it's a constant speed parameterization of this curve. That's particularly very, very, very nice for a lot of the things we're going to do with the, the geometry. And we'll, I'll talk more about why that's so nice. In particular, if it happened to be the unit circle, r equals 1. I do want to be able to talk about other than the unit circle for very important reasons. But if it happened to the unit circle, then we would have a very nice thing. The speed would be 1. That would be what's called a unit speed curve. And in the second part of these videos, I'm going to talk about some of the things that are nice about unit speed curves. Okay, But in general, the speed isn't going to be uh, just 1. It'll be r in this case. And we'll see that in for general curves, it's not even a constant. Okay, It's pretty obvious that this was very special that the t all dropped out here. OK, so let's talk about arc length. So that's the distance traveled by some point. Say a bug is crawling on the whiteboard here. And we want to know from certain time t to, let's say, t equals a to t equals b, I want to know how far that bug went. Or in general, it could be some funky curve, three dimensions, like this. Starts at t equals a, ends at t equals b. And I want to know the length of that curve. Now, obviously, I know how long it took to traverse the curve. That's just b minus a. But that's not directly telling me how long the curve is. Well, what's the, what's the relationship? It's way back to the very first algebraic equation, kind of the first word problem algebraic equation you might have ever done, distance equals rate times time. And that's really all there is to it. Okay? And it's really just sort of turning that into a calculus thing. Okay? So here's the way we're going to do that. The total length, how would we get the total length of this curve? We're going to do the calculus, the basic calculus concept, which is divide and conquer, break it up into a bunch of little pieces. So we're going to chop this up into little bits of length, and we'll call those little bits of length ds. And the total length is just going to be the integral of all those little bits of length. Now, in the book, you can see a more careful version of this, where they, they do it as Riemann sums and delta s and things like that. Um, but this really gets you there. This is how Newton would have thought of it, for example, and this is how, how physicists think of it as well. So we just need to figure out. How do you get the little bit of length along the curve given this kind of information? 
well, this kind of information isn't expressed in terms of t, in terms of time. Oh, but that's where this is coming in. Okay, That little bit of distance is going to be the speed, just another root for rate, times the little bit of time you let the clock run. So the ds isn't something you sort of choose independently. It's not really convenient to take the picture and chop it up into specified lengths. What you're really doing is you let the clock run dt. That is something you can control easier, like say let the clock run 0.1 seconds. See how far the thing goes by figuring out speed times time, and then that's how, you, how you're segmenting the thing up. So a ds here might be very different from a ds over here because the speed might be different, but that's okay. What we get is the integral of the, abs the magnitude of the derivative of the, of the position, that's the velocity, dt. And of course, that's integrated from a to b. Okay, and that's something that's very explicit in, in most cases. Okay, so it's really, I just want to say, it's, it's summing up, divide and conquer, basic idea of calculus, distance equals rate times time. Not much more to it. So, in this example, give myself some room here. Okay, well, so let's make it really explicit, actually. For, say, a three-dimensional curve, and if it's two dimensions or one dimensions, it's just going to be simpler. It's going to be the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared plus z prime of t squared, all integrated dt. Okay, and if this looks starts to look like it gets a little hairy, it shouldn't look too intimidating except for one thing. Um, the sum of the squares isn't really that bad. It's just maybe big, a lot of terms. But what actually is does often cause a ba a major problem is the square root because putting things inside of square roots makes them a lot harder to find explicit antiderivatives for. So that can be a problem. Okay, so for example, let's go back to our, our primary example. Um, let's just do the very basic example first. The unit circle, r equals one. We totally should get the right answer for that, right? Well, this was, ooh, that's just, that's v, not v prime. v prime would be the acceleration. That's going to come in later. Here, the speed is one. We have this wonderful fact that the integral then, the length, is just integral 0 to 2 pi of 1 dt. So really, I'm actually just saying, how long did the clock run? And that happens to be exactly how far I went. That's what's special about a unit speed curve. That's definitely just 2 pi. And of course, that's what we should get. OK, that was really too easy, almost. Uh, the non-unit circle, circle of radius r. OK. That's going to be now the magnitude of the velocity, or the speed, is r. We calculated that before. The length is now integral 0 to 2 pi, speed times time. Now it is do doing something interesting. I let the clock run a certain amount, but that speed was r, so that we get around the whole circle in the right amount of time. And again, that's integral of a constant, easy to do, 2 pi r. Exactly what we want. Okay, So that's confirming, at least in those cases, that it's really giving us what we think it should. OK, one more example, and then we'll move to the second part of the video, uh, a new video. So what about if I had something much less special and geometrically wonderful? R of t is, let's say, t comma t squared comma t cubed. And t equals 0 to t equals 1. Still, not particularly complicated. I'm not trying to make it complicated. But we're going to see something interesting, even though I'm not trying to make it complicated. The velocity is the derivative of the position. That's 1, 3t squared, 5, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, this was, no, I'm sorry. Oh, t cubed, t fifth. Yeah, no, otherwise I'm doing a book example. Uh, it's in the 5t fourth. OK. So this is just still not that complicated. OK. Um, and so the speed is the magnitude of that vector. Square root of, and now it's suddenly well, it doesn't get it, it doesn't get that bad right now. Twenty-five t to the eighth. Where it gets bad is when we put it in an integral. Okay, should be just the integral from zero to one of that square root quantity dt. Oh, suddenly, wait a minute, that's not so great. Algebra is not so hard, but putting nasty algebra into calculus, that's what makes it hard. Okay. And the fact is that many, many, many fairly natural arc length integrals 
are impossible, meaning impossible to do exactly analytically. And so what that means is you do it numerically, practically speaking. Okay, you use the calculator and you get an approximate answer. Okay, I'm not going to go ahead and do that because that wasn't what I'm terribly interested in here. Okay, so you might have to do it numerically. Now, there is one major exception to that. Um, and this is sort of an artifact of learning this, you know, from a textbook and doing book problems. There are going to be some special cases where you take this quantity, you take the sum of the squares of this guy, and there's going to be some contrived reason, or maybe sometimes a cool reason, like with trig identities or something, why this actually can be thought of as a perfect square, and therefore taking the square root of it actually is something that simplifies. Most of the time, there's not an algebraic simplification that's going to make this nice. But you should look out for it and be on, on the lookout for times when that will algebraically simplify. Okay? Because if the book is asking you to get the exact answer, not use the calculator, not a numerical approximation, you should be able to simplify this to get that square root out. Uh, except in maybe very, very special cases where you like to do a trig sub. But most of the time, it's because it's contrived to be a, a perfect square. Okay? But um, the fact is that that's a little bit contri contrived and just special to book problems. Um, most of the time, you're getting a nasty integral. In fact, um, historically, some very natural curves like ellipses, you do this process and you get such a nasty integral and yet it's such an important thing to calculate, it created whole new fields of mathematics and, and new functions and new, um, new discoveries because those integrals were so weird.